Hey everybody. Uh, oh man, I'm sitting here all slacking. I just wanted to do a video. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, happy tomorrow, whenever you watch this video. Uh, welcome. I wanted to do a video today. I did a post um, about a post I did, how's that sound, uh, a few days ago about teachers and how I've listened to many, many teachers. Like, I can't even tell you, probably hundreds of different teachers, scripturally, uh, about the Bible, about subjects in the Bible, about Jesus, about many things. And uh, I've learned probably something, one way or the other, from probably each and every one of them. However, I have also gotten the woe, the check mark in my spirit about something from each and every one of them also. And, um, you know, there's so much out there. A lot of people, oh, well, you know, so-and-so, you've never listened to so-and-so or, or whatever, you know, or I only listen to his teaching or, or whatever it is. It doesn't even matter. Um, so I was just out there this morning listening to yet another doctor of theology. And unfortunately, um, he's he's a very intelligent man, but what his doctorate in theology teaches him is contradictory to many other uh, views that I've listened to from other doctors. So I've titled this video, You Don't Need a Doctor, You Need the Great Physician, for, for one reason and one reason only. So often we go to hear uh, people, you know, and we're like, you know, doctor. And listen, I have many friends who have doctors in theology. I mean, many. This is not necessarily a cut against them or against you if you're watching, if you're one of them. However, we have to be very, very careful. The, the whole doctorate of theology that we, we receive from someone, we see that. And we assume that they have this extra special knowledge about Jesus or about God. See, it should be more a doctorate of a specific doctrine or of what they were taught. See, there are many of, many, okay, of my friends and some that aren't my friends that have doctorates that I can tell you have never met Jesus. I've been around people who uh, can talk all about church history, can talk all about um, hermeneutical stuff and all kinds of banana garbage, and literally wouldn't spot a demon in the room, wouldn't spot a movement of the Holy Spirit, don't understand um, relationship, don't understand anything. You know, it's crazy. In Scripture, Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty five. I have these things written down. It says, I thank you, Father, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. You know, just reading the Bible, um, we clearly see that God does not choose the brilliant people to be his disciples. Now, you can be brilliant and be a disciple of Christ. And yes, you need to read your Bible. Yes, you need to have some knowledge. Because God also says that uh, in Hosea, that his people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. See, we need knowledge of Christ, like revelation, spirit to spirit knowledge. We need to know what God expects of us. We need to know what's in the Bible. We need to know the commandments. We need to know that uh, God has sent his son and, and then and then sent his Holy Spirit to live in us. Like we need to understand the way things work. But what we don't really, uh, I get so turned off when I hear someone, mm, in the 13th century, Dr. Filippo, it doesn't even make sense. Who gives a crap? Who gives a crap about the 13th century? Well, you're probably, if you're one of these people, you're like, oh, you don't know church history. I don't care to know church history. I don't need to know church history. I know Jesus. See, 
In Acts 4.13, it says, Now as they observed the confidence of Peter and John and understood that they were uneducated and untrained, untrained men, they were amazed and began to recognize them as having been with Jesus. You know, the fruit that the Lord has given me, I've never sat down and talked about um, super, super califragilistic expialidocious to someone and then all of a sudden they got born again. But I will tell you that the Holy Spirit has come upon me and I have spoken words of love or conviction and laid hands on somebody and prayed for them or hugged them and boom, their lives have been changed. So many people run to certain places and just, oh my God, it's this guy, he's giving a lecture. I was, I've been listening to a few apologetics. Complete garbage. Some of it's complete garbage. One guy, uh, what you would call him is a fool um, preterist or whatever. He believes that all the prophecy in the Bible has already taken place. The end times and everything has taken place. Jesus returned in 70 AD, took his people up, uh, and we are just like rolling, like, we're the beginning of a new church. It's a garbage, dude. I don't see that in there. He's a doctor at that. So everybody, he tells that his opinion. He's a doctor, so people believe him. There's doctors in Mormonism. There's doctors in uh, Jehovah Witnesses, bishops, and all kinds of things. Doesn't even matter. There's doctors in Scientology. There's doctors in all kinds of stuff. It doesn't mean anything. It just means you're a do you know a lot about an opinion. And it's so crazy. I've listened to Dr. Moeller, who's a Baptist, and his in his ideas. I mean, he's a brilliant guy. No doubt in my mind is he a brilliant guy. No doubt. Reads a lot of books. Way to go, buddy. That's awesome. But some of his opinions about the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit contradict what I see in the Bible. And then there's doctors uh, in the Pentecostal. You know, they have doctors of this. And they're like, you know, every other word. Uh, in the, uh, the movement out in where it started in Azusa and this and that and a shot of da 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 Listen, babies talk like that, dude. Stop it. Doctor means nothing. Absolutely nothing. It means you've paid a lot of money, went to school for a very long time, and learned what somebody taught you. There is no such thing as a doctorate of Jesus. I've been with Jesus so long. Actually, maturity in Christianity is, is very expensive. It costs you everything. Actually, the people who know Jesus the most are the ones who are broken the most. Who understand that without God, they are nothing. Textbooks, that all those books behind me, including the one I wrote, poo-poo, gone, not going to be here, doesn't mean anything when it comes to Jesus. Can we learn from it? Of course we can. But I see people, uh, one of my friends is, is striving to get their doctorate in theology, $80,000 or some kind of crazy thing they were talking about. Bro, it's like I was listening to, oh my gosh, I'm trying to think, Acts, one of the chapters where the man named Simon wanted to buy the Holy Spirit, wanted to give me the power, lay hands on me, I'll pay you so you can give me that. That, that is what really reminded me of it. I'm like, wait a second, dude, you got to pay 80 grand to know more of Jesus? No, actually, here's what it cost me. Uh, it cost me my pride. It cost me everything I knew about my life and thought about. Uh, it's cost me sometimes my last penny, but not paying a school to teach me what they think. It's, it's my last penny to give the person that needs food. Sometimes it's cost, it's cast, it's cost me, sorry, I'm fired up, dude. I'm fired up. Fired up. Because opinions, I don't care uh, what degree level your opinion is. It doesn't make it truth. Truth is Christ and, and in the Bible. Ten different opinions. Ten different doctors have ten different opinions. Do you know there's five different opinions and theories about 
the tribulation period and about any rapture and stuff. Five different ones. And and there are doctors that have that stand under those opinions. So you'd listen to one doctor. Doctors are like, no, the rapture shall take place before uh, the tribulation because, and then they'll go in through scripture and say, God never punished his people with the bid people or this, 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 and that. And then the next person says mid trib, um, mid trib, and he's like, uh, and this is why, and goes through scripture. And then another guy is like, no way, dude, rapture, but boom, right before the wrath hits, you're going to go through the tribulation, and he gives a good case with that. Calvinism, Arminianism, nope, we're predestined, no, we're don't, we have free choice, and doctors in both. Firmly believing that they are 100% right. Firmly believing you're 100% right in any doctrine, any uh, man-made crap, right, is pride and is error in itself. We need to be open. Okay, Lord, listen, man, if this is you, like, I need, I need to know. He'll teach you. It says in, in my post, I talked about um, how Jesus says you have one teacher, and it's him, dude. He's the teacher. He said that the Holy Spirit will come and lead you into all truth, will glorify him and lead you into all truth. The Holy Spirit will. Not Dr. So-and-so, not Dr. Gavorkian, not Dr. Who, not Dr. Anybody will never lead you into all truth. As a matter of fact, you can put the, the, the smartest doctor of theology in front of a group of unbo uh, unborn-again people, unsaved people, and nothing, nothing will change. Not a thing. John 3.3 3 says, Lest a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. It doesn't mean go into heaven or the kingdom of God. It doesn't mean that. The word enter, I'm going to pull out my smarty pants professor head. That word in Greek means comprehend or understand. You can't even understand the kingdom of God without the spirit of God, without being born again. You, cannot be, you can be not born again and pay $250,000, go to school for 25 years, be uh, a 52-stripe doctor, professor and everything, and never see Jesus. You don't need a doctor. You need the great physician. Jesus is sufficient. Now, to my doctor friends that stuck it out this long, I love you and I've learned from you. And thank you for your opinion. And I appreciate it. And some things uh, have really been life-changing. But on the other hand, I can't come before Jesus and say, well, I learned this from Dr. So-and-so. It doesn't count. It doesn't mean anything in, in eternal, in, in the eternity of time or whatever, in the time of eternity. Grand, I don't get, wow, whoa, you sat under so-and-so? You sat under Gamaliel or whatever that guy's name is, Gargamel? doesn't matter bro you don't need a doctor you need the great physician he is the one inevitably who teaches you everything spend time with him spend time in the word which is him in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God as a matter of fact when Paul told Timothy to teach the word in and out of spirit be ready in and out of season. Be ready. Give the word. So many people say, oh man, that means from Genesis to Revelation. Well, first of all, Timothy didn't have this, bro. He didn't have this. And I've never heard Paul sit down and read verse for verse anywhere. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh. Preach Jesus. That's it. Jesus. You know why we preach Jesus? Because he is the Lord and Savior. He has all authority in heaven and on earth. He came to save you. Died. Gave up his life. Gave his life up. Resurrected and ascended. Seated at the right hand of the Father. And now everything is under his authority. Know him. It's not what you know. It's who you know. And who you know better be Jesus. Again, you don't need a doctor. You need the great physician.